Welcome to the At The IP Show. This is an astronomy-based podcast that is devoted to discussing astronomical equipment, stargazing tips, observing reports, and equipment reviews. We don't focus on the science of astronomy. There are plenty of shows that do that. The focus of At The IP is the visual observers, those backyard stargazers that enjoy taking their telescopes under the stars and those individuals wishing to join our ranks. After all, what matters to stargazers is what's at the eyepiece. Well, good evening out there, my fellow backyard stargazers, and welcome to another episode of At the Eyepiece. This is episode number 73 for Sunday, February 10th, 2020. 13. Tonight's episode, we are doing not only our typical podcast live show on Blog Talk Radio, but we're also doing our um, video stream as well on Google Plus Hangouts, which will also be a recorded uh, video ready for you to check out at any later time right there on YouTube. I suggest you go ahead over to YouTube. If you want to go ahead and subscribe, I certainly recommend you do so. Subscribe to probably both of my channels, John Kramer, K-R-A-M-E-R, as well as the at the eyepiece channel as well, so that you're always kept up to date with the latest on uh, astronomy as far as observing uh, equipment reviews and all the like that we like to do here on the at the IP show. On this particular episode, we are going to be talking about a number of books that are my favorites here, both on the Kindle as well as, you know, typical print. We are also going to be doing a little bit more about the Solar Max 62. This is the Coronado. This is a dedicated hydrogen alpha telescope that uh, I want to, I've had it for a number of months now and I wanted to just go ahead and share a little bit more of my experience as well as go ahead and give viewers um, that are either on the live hangout or checking out on the Google Plus or uh, um, rather on the YouTube channel after the fact, uh, get an opportunity to see the Coordinato 60 for themselves. In addition, we are also going to get to uh, my product review or, or a brief, I guess we'll call it the um, product showcase, the Mead Series 5000 24 millimeter ultra wide angle eyepiece. So we got a lot to get to here on the show. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, of course, we are live. If you feel the need, you'd like to go ahead and call in to participate. Remember our call in number, guest call in number here for the duration of the show for the next 30 minutes is going to be 760-454-1129. Got a lot to get to, so I'm going to go ahead and try to get through it here because we just have a lot of things to get to talking about. First, as we always like to go ahead and do, uh, as far as my observing um, personally for the last couple of weeks, it has been practically nothing. Uh, mostly the minor opportunities that I've had to get out and observe have been during the daytime and primarily dedicated to hydrogen alpha observing. Not a whole lot of nighttime observing. But I would like to go ahead and say that we uh, have had good feedback on our tour of the month for last month. Uh, don't forget, if you too would like to go ahead and receive uh, last month's or really any of the previous audio tour of the month that we've done, and you want to go ahead and have that Sky Safari observing list for yourself, just send me an email. Uh, at the eyepiece at gmail.com. Be more than happy to go ahead and share that to you. So that being said, it's likely that our February audio tour of the month is probably going to be bumped into March, which probably isn't a bad thing anyway, um, but we'll go ahead and see how we work through that as well. So that's my uh, brief review of observing. Now I'd like to go ahead and talk about some industry news out there. What's new out there for astronomical equipment? And we've got a lot of updates here to go ahead and cover. Now for starters, number one, let's go ahead and talk about some new and interesting uh, um, developments here with a great spot for you if you're looking for some heavily discounted merchandise for astronomical equipment, and that is, of course, Mead's 
deals of the week. Now they have a site that's dedicated to these deals. If you go to store.need.com forward slash weekly deals, you're going to find a number of very, very good items. In particular, and I'm sorry, they are already sold out of these. I would have actually purchased these myself. In fact, I had plans on purchasing this myself, especially with all of the talk of Comet Panstars and ISON coming up. They had a pair of 12 by 60 astronomical binoculars. Normal price was $79.99. $19.99, but unfortunately, yes, they are sold out, but still uh, ready to go. They have a, a Audio Star computerized go-to telescope at $199 with a 90 millimeter refractor. That, that's pretty good by itself. Computerized go-to, a basketball projection clock. I'm not sure how that fits into astronomy, but hey, it's it's sold by Mead. Um, handheld microscope, as well as a lunar and planetary filter set, looks to be inch and a quarter, and that itself is 19.99. So check those out periodically because I don't think you're going to be disappointed with Mead's weekly deals going on there. They do change, and as you can see, uh, it. If it's a good deal, as the binoculars were, they can fly off the shelves, no doubt, and get uh, picked up. So that's something good to go ahead and check out there. That is store.need.com forward slash weekly deals. Those of you that are checking out the YouTube and the uh, Google Plus Hangout, by the way, we're on that page right now as we're seeing it. So catch an opportunity to jot down that. Now, in addition to... To that information, Mead has released their LX850 scopes. That's right, they have finally released their LX850. Now, those of you, I'm sure you're probably familiar, but those of you know, uh, may, may not know rather, uh, that a while back, Mead had uh, released the revolutionary LX800. These had an incorporated star lock optical uh, tracking system. It was essentially um, that you can go ahead and set this telescope up. It would auto track, auto guide everything for you. You basically are just setting the exposure times for your camera. While there was a lot of issues with that, they did a recall rather unprecedented as far as I know. I don't know of any astronomical equipment that has ever had a full recall done. Uh, but they came back, they went back to the drawing boards, they listened to some of the problems that they had from amateurs out there, and now they've finally released their LX850. Now let's go through here with a couple of the highlights of what they've changed. New polished worm gears in, new, in uh, both right ascension declination, larger bearings in both right ascension and declination. New clutch, clutch assemblies, rather, to allow freer motion with the clutches loosened for easier balance. I know firsthand from a number of the posts that I was reading and following on cloudy nights that that was a particular uh, item of concern for a lot of uh, amateur uh, astrophotographers out there. A new one-piece, one-inch thick saddle plate with improved dovetail clamps, thicker optical tube assembly rails and radius blocks to reduce flexure between the optical tube and the mount. New uh, alternative Starlock mounting position on ACF optical tubes for virtually no flexure between Starlock and the primary, uh, primary optics. Uh, some improvements, no doubt, to the Starlock software. And there is a new Starlock automatic guide rate calibration, which analyzes the sky conditions and sets the best possible rates for guiding in right ascension and declination. So, the scope uh, physically looks a little bit different with these modifications, so I'm certainly glad that Mead has gone out there and uh, fixed the issues. Hopefully they uh, released this just, I think, last week. Uh, they said in their Facebook page that they were uh, getting in the hands of those uh, affected by the recall, of course, on the LX800s. So I, for one, will keep everyone up to date with the latest news and developments on these new instruments from Mead. Uh, we certainly know that they need to go ahead, Mead that is, needs to go ahead and really um, 
get it right now because it was a fiasco with the LX800s. I'm certainly hoping that they, they got it right and it becomes a very, very good opportunity for them to uh, regain uh, some of the, the uh, confidence out there that has certainly been lost by amateur astronomers, their main consumers. Now, we'll go back on over here to another mount release that is completely 180 from the original LX80 uh, release, and we're going to jump on over with Celestron, and Celestron has released their new Celestron Advanced Series VX mount. Yes, this is a replacement of their CG5 computerized go-to mounts. Those have been around for a very, very long time. People still rave about them as far as their performance and what you get in a German equatorial scope for the price point that they're offering. And of course, Celestron now has the advanced VX mount. It looks really um, very nice, refined changes to it. We'll go ahead and um, catch up on a few specifications here. I know that the new design allows for viewing and imaging actually across the meridian uh, without interference from motors, which is a good thing. Uh, I know that I have a CG5, and that's one of the limitations on the mount. It has an updated industrial design, which offers more uh, rigidity, less flexure, and improved aesthetics. It certainly does look like a very beautiful German equatorial mount. Uh, integer gear ratios and permanently programmable periodic error correction eliminates the recurring tracking errors with worm gears. That, I believe, was not a function in their CG5s, so that's also an improvement there. Uh, new motors for improved tracking performance and provides more power to overco overcome load imbalances. Now, its weight limit is just about what the CG5 is too, which I believe is 30 pounds, but it's great that they've incorporated improved motors because, let's face it, you're going to put some instruments on there, you're going to have a guide scope, you're going to have cameras, you're going to have you know, finders, etc. So incorporating improved motors uh, no doubt will handle will help that out quite a bit. Uh, there's some also improved latitude ranges, improved electronics with increased memory for future expansion, and uh, of course the Nexstar Plus hand controller, which I've used, which is very, very good as well. Perhaps most importantly here with this new mount and why it's such a 180 and really the case study for other companies out there releasing brand new astronomical equipment is they talked about the uh, equipment being available, released the product, and was already in the hands of dealers for you to purchase. And perhaps most importantly, uh, from the, what, I think 16 pages, if not maybe a little bit less, uh, from a dedicated Cloudy Nights Forum discussion on these new mounts from Celestron's, people that are getting it in their hands and already have been using it are really, really happy with the mount. There's also a number of YouTube videos out there already showing unboxing and utilizing the mounts themselves. So hats off to Celestron for their new Celestron VX series mounts. Uh, certainly something to consider, certainly one uh, that I would be interested in in the future as well. Well, next up for another interesting new uh, telescopes that we uh, have just been released. Now this is more along the lines for folks in the UK perhaps, but I've mentioned before Skylight Telescopes. Well, they are having a big, big astronomy equipment uh, festival out there called AstroFest 2013, and Skylight Instruments, who makes fantastically beautiful, uh, more traditionally old school perhaps refractors, long focus refractors, well they have teamed up with Teleview Optics and have released their new Skylight AR101 F15 refractor. Um, those of you in the channel here are able to go ahead and see, but it's a beautiful looking instrument uh, as far as red. I, I do really like the red color here uh, that they have on there. They have a couple of pictures here of it, no doubt on more of a display mount, I would imagine, a big, thick, wooden type of pier. Um, 
but uh, it, it, it's a beautiful looking instrument. They've teamed up with Teleview. Everyone knows the quality that goes behind with Teleview. So good stuff again too, uh, coming from Skylight Telescopes with a new refractor with Teleview optics in that instrument as well. And last but not least, you know, I'm, perhaps I've mentioned it before, uh, but I want to go ahead and share some views here for those that are chiming on on the uh, on the channel with us. We are going to go ahead and show you just the beautiful images of the OpticSmart uh, Halo. Uh, recall that these halos are for Dobsonian telescopes, and they essentially permit you to use setting circle features for your Dobsodians. And the great thing is that you can use them on both the Apertura series, obviously, but they also have manufactured it now for Zamel as well as uh, Mead Lightbridge series. And I will tell you that the close-up pictures here from this cloudy night post directly from OpticSmart, um, with in particular their Lightbridge, are just simply beautiful, beautiful work with the halos. Uh, it looks really, really sharp and I for one am looking forward to getting that a little bit closer here into the spring perhaps, maybe in the summer, but I for one am definitely going to be picking up a halo for my Aperture 8012 as well. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, sure hope I remember that this is correct from them, uh, that they also will, will have that all pre-done pre on brand new Apertures that they're selling. And they say you can get it as an option. They they set it up. They they put it on the instrument for you, so that when you're get it getting it, you're ready to go. Uh, pretty straightforward. It even incorporates a leveling a leveling base. Those of you on the Google Plus Hangouts are going to be watching this on the YouTube channel. Here can see the beautiful way uh, it looks on these light bridges. Really, really sharp. And anything to help us find objects uh, in the night sky with some degree of simplicity yet accuracy is certainly going to be sought after from all of us backyard stargazers. Okay, so that should do it for our um, vendor news here for uh, this week and this episode 73. So let's go ahead and go into our book reviews. Now, what I was mentioning before is uh, the Kindle um, really has revolutionized uh, reading as far as I'm concerned. And certainly any Android capable device such as I have with the Kindle app is a great thing to have because you can, you can literally download your books and have them available to you in a matter of seconds. So I for one have been uh, trying to do as much reading as possible and uh, I just wanted to go ahead and share a few of my recommended books. Uh, on not only Kindle, but also in print as well, because some of my favorite books actually have not been incorporated into the Kindle. So let's go ahead and get started with that. Now, perhaps one of the most recent books that I finished, um, because I've, I just got into Hydrogen Alpha um, observing with the Coronado Solar Max 60, so I thought it was fitting to go ahead and, and jump with this one here. This is a book that is available on your Kindle for download, and it is called The Sun and How to Observe It by Jeremy Jenkins. And uh, this book, very reasonably priced, priced at uh, $21. Your Kindle edition is actually a few bucks less, and that's good. Um, if you are new to Hydrogen Alpha or you're interested in hydrogen alpha and actually white light observing too. Uh, don't forget, white light observing sunspots gives you a fascinating um, scientific background on it. Um, not too over the top on the science aspect. Certainly someone like a layman like myself can follow it. But it also gets very good um, explanations of actual scientific contribution that you can do both in hydrogen alpha and in white light as far as sunspot tracking, flare, activity tracking, etc. So at that price I really really enjoyed the sun. Uh, it was very thorough, um, not a very long long read, 224 uh, pages, but if you're interested in the sun and hydrogen alpha Highly recommended with that. Now, going back a little bit, uh, I have always had a degree of fascination with the whole Pluto thing. And 
in particular, uh, not necessarily the demise of Pluto, but more along the lines of actually the whole planetary debate and what is making Pluto so different than some of the other planets, uh, dwarf planets, asteroids, etc., minor planets that might be out there, and what the whole big deal was a number of years ago to go ahead and reclassify it. Well, and one book in particular that I'll get to here uh, is The Case for Pluto, How a Little Planet Made a Big Difference by um, Alan Boyle. Um, this book was also very good. Uh, it was an easy read. I mean, I just really couldn't put it down. It was so fascinating, really. And uh, at 1660 right now on Amazon, really good deal for the hardcover. Your Kindle edition is 1262. And yes, you can go ahead and download that to your Kindle as well. Great reference, really good and interesting there for your for those of you that are interested in how uh, the whole thing developed with Pluto. Now, another book perhaps that um, is also uh, regarding Pluto is from a gentleman here uh, by the name of David Weintraub. And that book is, Is Pluto a Planet? A Historical Journey Through the Solar System. And we're going to bring that book up here. He actually has written two that are going to be on my list today. So yes, I do really like it. And now this publication, uh, even though it is probably my favorite right now book that I probably have ever read, as far as astronomy goes. Uh, it's not available on the Kindle, but it is available, of course, as a soft copy. Um, and it's $21.95. This book uh, was just fascinating. I, I couldn't put it down. I think I read through it in just a couple uh, or a few days. Um, it was just so, so interesting, the development from early solar system all the way to the Pluto debate. Now, keeping with uh, the Pluto debate, we'll bounce over here to uh, a book by Mike Brown called How I Killed Pluto and Why I It Had It Coming. Uh, this book wasn't, wasn't too bad. It really wasn't one of my favorites. Um, there was, uh, you know, it was interesting aspects. I certainly enjoyed the read, put it that way. Uh, but I certainly enjoyed the case for Pluto and a, is Pluto a planet uh, much more uh, or more so than How I Killed Pluto. But this gentleman, Mike Brown, is actually the person behind the demise of Pluto because he discovered, I believe, Eris, which is the largest body in the solar system uh, outside the solar, our main solar system at that time. Now, going back to uh, David Weintraub, he actually has a publication here uh, that is also a very interesting read and is available on your Kindle. It's How Old is the Universe. Now, I have not finished this book. This is still about midway for me. Um, but so far, very, very good. It's a, a bit techy at times. It covers a lot of different things. But primarily, as the name implies, it really does help you to understand how the scientific approach of aging things from Earth to meteorites that land to, to everything really goes through uh, and we can figure those things out. So it's an excellent read there for that as well. Haven't finished it all the way though, still trying to work my way through that. Uh, the Georgian Star by Michael Lemonick. That is a book by one of my favorite amateur or bot for my favorite uh, amateur astronomers and that is um, William and Caroline Herschel. And I'm glad that this book went ahead and covered also a bit about Caroline because she was actually a very good amateur astronomer in her own right. So uh, very good read there, very interesting about someone who is not formally trained on astronomy but made certainly some significant contributions to astronomy. Uh, William Her and Caroline Herschel revolutionized our understanding of the cosmos. And of course, last but not least, one book that I am still, uh, I only just picked this up not too long ago, which is by Timothy Ferris, Seeing in the Dark. This is a book about 
amateur astronomers. So of course it is a great, great read and highly, highly recommended. Now one thing very unique about this is that he also has a movie about amateur astronomers called Seeing in the Dark. Uh, it's available from PBS and uh, it's on DVD format for $24.99. So that in and of itself is uh, a great, great recommendation there for uh, that book. So as we uh, are going and flying through here, time flies by here, we are going to no doubt run a little bit over from our 30 minute mark, but now we are going to get back into astronomical equipment talk. I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing the desktop and go back to our video camera here. And we are going to go ahead and talk more about the Coronado Solar Max 60 scope. Now I'm going to do my best to go ahead and describe these features here for our listening audience both on blog talk radio as well as traditional podcast format and of course for those of you on the Google Plus Hangout if there's any there right now or those of you that are checking this out later on from the YouTube video. This is the Coronado Solar Max 60 case that this instrument comes in here. Uh, it is a, it, it certainly is a, um, it's certainly going to protect the instrument no doubt from use. Uh, some have criticized that it's it's not a very um, heavy duty case. Okay, we can go ahead and say that. Um, it's, I certainly think that it's going to be uh, suitable to protect the case. It doesn't give a whole lot of padding on the sides of it, no, but there's a nice thick foam there, or foam rather, and I, I think it's going to do certainly very, very well here uh, with protecting the, the case itself. So now let's go ahead and get the Coronado SolarMax 60 out so that we can go ahead and talk about the instrument in a little bit more detail, perhaps. So this right here, uh, this is a 60 millimeter objective, by the way, uh, dedicated hydrogen alpha uh, scope from Coronado, which is actually owned by Mead Instruments. And Drop it back. There we go. It's got a wonderful black and gold finish to it. Really, really looks very, very classy. One of the things, too, if you pick one of these up, this is a heavy instrument. Um, as far as how much it weighs here, um, let's go ahead and do that real quick for you. Now, I do have an additional Vixen dovetail on there, which isn't going to give us a completely accurate um, weight here, but we'll go ahead and do it anyway. So it's just about five pounds, six ounces there uh, with this instrument. So it's pretty uh, hefty feel to it as well. Uh, you'll notice that uh, there is not your traditional type of focus mechanism. No, uh, this is perhaps a kind of a trademark seconds. thing here to uh, Coronado, but they use this push and pull mechanism here and then with the helical focuser right here. Now in practice, I was, I, well let's back up a bit. I was a bit concerned about that when I first purchased the instrument, never having used something like this before. But I would tell you that in, in practice it works out very, very well. Um, you just simply drop this back seconds. to achieve your close focus here, your coarse focus, or your coarse focus okay and then you adjust this dial right here to adjust your fine focus and it actually works very well I've put an, a Barlow on the back here with a number of video cameras both the imaging source DMK21 um, my Mi DSi and last but not least the uh, Samsung SCB2000 uh, surveillance camera and it, there's no sagging that I can it works just fine uh, no problem at all now you will notice here is the reason that they call this the Solar Max 2 is because of this adjustment lever right here. This is your Edelon tuner. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. Edelon tuner here. And this is what basically brings the Ten viewing seconds. of the surface detail and prominences on band so that basically you can see them through the diagonal here. Within this diagonal is your blocking filter. This has a BF10 in it. I believe they come in BF um, 
500, 10, and 15, if I am not mistaken. This is the uh, 10 version here. This does work very, very well, by the way. Um, traditional tilt tune hydrogen alpha scopes would probably have the tilting mechanism here, maybe back here as well. But you'll have a very small dial. I've used one of those from a Lunt LS35 that a friend of ours had, friend of mine had, and I must say that, that you know I prefer having the ability to adjust it with this mechanism here. Um, there's no slippage on it. It works perfectly. I don't see any um, any sweet spotting of the instrument myself. And oh, by the way, it does come with a 25 millimeter CMAX eyepiece. I will say that you probably want to go ahead and get a dif different eyepiece. The 25 millimeter range is. Obviously, you know, it works fine. It's a it's a nice looking, it seems like a quality eyepiece, but it's just a small sun in there. So uh, I, I like something in the 15 millimeter range, 15 to 12 myself with this. Now this right up here, you will see is actually the finder scope for the hydrogen alpha. I was also a bit concerned about that too. Um, thinking that, well, gosh, you got, you got to look through it as a traditional finder. Uh, that's going to bring a, a lot of danger and, and, and frankly, a lot of a glare from the sun, but not at all. You'll be able to clearly see the sun, even at an off angle like this, uh, as you're slewing or moving it manually to it. Works perfectly. Right in the center of this screen here, white dot, white ball, and it's going to be in the eyepiece itself. Now, right at the bottom here, uh, now I do have a Vixen dovetail. No, this does not come with a Vixen dovetail. It comes with your standard tripod holes. I think that these are inch and a quarter or three eighths. Um, I don't recall offhand, but there's three of them here so that you can go ahead and mount the instrument on a tripod feature. Or, of course, I picked this in addition up from Orion Telescopes, which, by the way, I purchased this Coronado from uh, Orion Telescopes. And um, you can, you know, mount it on something uh, uh, that accepts that type of connection, obviously, or get your standard dovetail here, uh, Vixen standard dovetail, rather, uh, for pickup. Now, physical characteristics, like I said, that pretty much goes over everything. It's got a fantastic fit and finish to it, as far as I'm concerned. Um, the 60 millimeters is very good for showing you detail and getting improved resolution over some of the smaller models. As far as the uh, the tuning mechanism here goes, I, 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 I like that better than the dial myself. Um, I just I you just feel like you've got a little bit more control over it. You feel it moving better than the dial. I, I do prefer that. Now as far as the focusing, focus, focusing mechanism goes, Yes, it's a bit unorthodox, but it does work absolutely fine. Uh, you can get a little bit used to it yourself. Uh, it works fine. Um, I will say that you will need two hands with using the focus on this. Uh, don't try to do it with one hand and hold a laptop while you're trying to focus your imaging. That won't work. Uh, trust me from that one. But go ahead and visually get it focused. Get a parfocal ring for your eyepiece. You're set. Um, this is much preferred for imaging uh, as well. So I don't necessarily miss the typical, you know, rack and pinion, uh, you know, type of, of focuser there. Uh, this is certainly uh, is adequate. And of course, you can go ahead eventually and get a double stack unit. There's threaded right here for you to go ahead and get a double stack unit, so you can see even more. Uh, detail. As far as visually, it's it's great. I mean, you, you see very, very clear prominences in this. The surface detail you can make out. It's more difficult to go ahead and discern the surface detail, such as the filaments, but you can go ahead and see them. Now, that being said, for outreach, I can see where people could have a little bit of difficulty and this might be universal for hydrogen alpha scopes. A little bit of difficulty actually seeing anything because the placement of your eye up to the eyepiece is very, very important, I think, for hydrogen alpha. You get to the moments where you don't see anything, you adjust your eye position, your head position, really, and all of a sudden, boom, there's the red ball of light, which is our sun. Um, so just keep that in mind. 
for 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 doing any type of outreach. I don't think it's particular to the scope. I think it's more particular to uh, hydrogen alpha viewing. Uh, imaging, like I said, does th this does great as far as imaging goes. I hope to one day get a double stack unit for the instrument so that I can get even further uh, detail. Uh, it's been able to reach focus with uh, my Barlow, um, with my imaging source uh, camera, uh, with my Samsung camera as well. So uh, Coronado Solom X60 I think is a very, very solid, very solid uh, choice for you out there if you're looking for hydrogen alpha. Uh, now of course, LUNT is a fantastic option too. I, I, I'm certainly not going to say anything bad about LUNT. They're great. Uh, they have a great customer service and uh, they have a great product as well. So you really can't go wrong I think with either one you're choosing. If you're primarily imaging, primarily imaging, I think you might be better off going with the LUNT only because of more of the traditional focusing mechanism. But if you're visual uh, and going in with imaging too, Solom X60 can be on your lookout as well, couldn't be on your option. Now the reason that I went ahead and purchased from Orion Telescopes is because I wanted to go with a trusted vendor that I know that if I was not satisfied with the product, it doesn't have to be that it's not working or that there's a problem with it, but if I was not satisfied with the unit, I could go ahead and return it within 30 days. So I'm glad that Orion Telescopes does sell this as well. So that is the breakdown with the Coronado Solar Max 60. Uh, hopefully seeing some of the pictures uh, here um, on the video uh, gives you the opportunity to go ahead and, and, and look at the instrument for yourself here. And certainly check out the YouTube channels, uh, John Kramer, as well as at the IPs because I post up a lot of the hydrogen alpha live views there for yourself. So I highly recommend you do that. So we are running a little bit over, but that's okay. We've got plenty of stuff here to talk to you in the show. And last but not least, I wanted to go ahead and get to the product showcase. This is the Mead Series 5000 2 inch wide angle 24 millimeter eyepiece. Let's go ahead and talk about some of the physical characteristics. Obviously, this is a large eyepiece, um, very, very large. I kind of call it my eye grenade, affectionately, because it is a very large eyepiece. As far as the weight goes, it's a little bit over a pound, by the way. Um, that should concern folks that, in particular, have Dobsonians, because you do want to go ahead and get some way of counterbalancing this eyepiece. It will throw your balance off. So just keep that in mind for Dobsonian users, really I guess for any uh, any user out there uh, with scope that, that needs to be balanced. Uh, this is a heavy eyepiece, big heavy eyepiece, certainly not the, the biggest or the heaviest out there, but consider that. Keep that in mind. Uh, I love the fit and finish of it. This has got a, a rubberized uh, ring around it here that you can see. Uh, it has threaded two-inch barrel here for filters, recess groove, so prevent slippage. And it also has a very interesting mechanism for bringing up your eye guard, and that is a twist up. It actually twists up there to relieve a nice, pliable, soft rubber eye guard that I really, really like. Um, now, in warm weather, I will say that the twist-up mechanism with the grease here works very, very well. Uh, in cold weather observing, though, my recommendation is to adjust it first inside, then take it out, because as you get into colder weather, it will get harder. I don't think you can actually go ahead and dial this, by the way, while it's in the diagonal. So I recommend making that adjustment. Also, keep your fingers away from the black area here where you no doubt have some of that grease for the twisting mechanism there. You don't want to get that on your optics. Comes in a comes with these standard uh, eyepiece covers as well. Now, optical performance with this thing is beautiful. Uh, most memorable view of M81 and M82 in the same field of view eyepiece that I've ever had. Uh, that's with an 8-inch instrument. Scanning 
the Milky Way Sagittarius globular clusters in the aperture 8012 with this eyepiece is just fantastic. Uh, its field of view is good. It's not pinpoint all the way to the edge, but for 82 degree field of view eyepiece, it does really, really well with it. It's very sharp, no internal reflections. This is a premium eyepiece as far as I'm concerned. Uh, so very, very highly recommended here if you're looking for a two inch eyepiece. Now the best part, folks. Mead had recently a weekly deal from the part that I was talking to earlier in the show where they offered this eyepiece and the 5000 series two inch diagonal with an inch and a quarter adapter. Both of these folks for $159.99. That's a fantastic deal. Now I did a couple of things around and I would recommend you checking out a number of different astronomical vendors. I think Woodlands Hills don't well, I, I think you should check them out. I think they actually are offering this eyepiece and diagonal for $159.99. You want to check them out at telescopes.net. If I'm mistaken, hey, just do a Google search out there for this eyepiece and see what the best price you can find. But I would not be surprised if a number of vendors are going to go ahead and start liquidating those out at $159. At that price, that's a great deal for an eyepiece and diagonal. All right, so that is going to be a wrap for this episode uh, 73 yeah, 73 for the at the eyepiece show I want to go ahead and thank everybody sorry I ran just a little bit over about 11 minutes over our 30 minute time frame but we had a lot to get to I sure hope you enjoyed um, the audio aspects of course with this if you're listening to it on a podcast and I want to go ahead and thank everyone that might be in there watching the live Google Plus hangout and of course Head on over to the YouTube channels. That's John Kramer as well as at the eyepiece. This way you can go ahead and watch these videos at your own convenience. Check out the videos that we do from the views with the Coronado, anything like that. More reviews, etc. right there. And of course you can head on over to my blog at the eyepiece.com where I did post up there, I think it was last week actually, my full review of Olivon eyepieces. So don't forget to check that out as well. In the up and coming week we will have a couple of videos posted by the way of, um, uh, of a few of the Olivon offerings there so you might want to go ahead and check back for that. Next episode is going to be I believe February 24th so we'll go ahead and keep an eye out for that. But for now, clear skies everyone and I hope to see you next time at the eyepiece.